we thank you for tonight. We praise your holy and gracious name. Thank you because you have been our rock. You have been our shield. You have been our protector. You have been our anchor. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, tonight lay your hands upon us. Father, I pray for everyone that had any pending testimony, any pending breakthrough, any pending miracle, any pending and outstanding blessing. Hanging up for anyone before this year runs on hand, let them begin to manifest. In the name of Jesus, let them begin to manifest. In the name of Jesus, let your hand be upon us for good. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Amen. Tonight, I want you to listen very carefully. The topic is power to get to the top. Power to get to the top. And as many people have know that they are destined for the top. Can I hear them shouting loud hallelujah? <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13. It's good that you open to that place. That's our starting scripture. Deuteronomy 2013. If you are there, say yes. It says this. And the Lord shall make thee the head. And listen carefully. And not the tail. And thou shall be above only. And thou shall not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Two positions are made available. The head and the tail. So, but the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. The meaning of that is that it is not the design of the Almighty that should be in the tail. I want you to understand this very well. Every man or woman is created in the image and likeness of God. At this, they put God down like this. They're looking at that image, they begin to mold the person. Every creation of God is created for glory. And as far as you are a child of God and you are born again, you have the potential to become the best that God wants you to be. At the point of salvation, a wind of the Holy Spirit blows into you, which will make it possible for you to get to the level the Almighty wants you to get to. So every believer in Christ, let me say that again, every believer in Christ has the capacity to become the best God has destined him or her to be. So meaning that what we're saying is this, you have potential, right there where you're sitting, you have potential. To be infinitely better than what you are now. You have the potential to reach the highest level that heaven has written down for you. It may be hard work. It may be like swimming through a river of crocodile and sharks. It may be like riding in a stormy sea. But getting there is not a crash program. And you will not get there by accident. It is not an empty talk. It's not just for you to stand up every day and say, every day I'm getting better and better. Every day I'm getting better and better. It is action. The actions must be taken. There is an initiative. You must have that initiative. An initiative is doing the right thing at the right time without having to be told. So reaching that top requires radical action. Radical consecration. Radical concentration. And most importantly, aggressive warfare. Why is it like that? Because the toughest part of getting to the top of the ladder 
is getting through that crowd at the bottom. Because at that bottom, there is a crowd of crabs pulling whoever wants to go up down. Some are pulled down by enemies of their own household. Who said to Joseph, let us slay him. Let's cast him to the pit. The behold, he said, that dreamer is coming. Let's cast him into a pit. And then let us see what will become of his dreams. His members of his household. So the toughest part in getting to that top is to escape from the various crowd at the bottom of the ladder. And thus the crowd at the bottom of the ladder includes foe, includes unfriendly enemies, includes weaknesses, includes destructive habits. It includes all kinds of things. It includes pride. It includes laziness. All of them are there in that place by the crowd at the bottom trying to pull people down. That is the toughest part of it. But immediately you're able to get out of that crowd with radical consecration, radical concentration, aggressive warfare, that you get to the top of the ladder. There is something about the top you need to know. There is plenty of vacancy at that top because only few people find their ways there. Plenty of vacancy. There is no fighting, fighting, fighting. But it's at the bottom here. Trying, struggling, battling, valley spirits, this and that and that and that. All those is at the bottom. I agree that they say Nigeria is corrupt. I agree that they say things are not what they're supposed to be. But even as it is now, the total mark, I think, you should score in a jam exam. I think it's 400. If you take that exam and you score 400 over 400, nobody struggles with you. They will first of all pick all of you that high range out. Then all the other of rubber fight will start with people with 200, 220. Nobody struggles with those ones. There's plenty of vacancy. But in the valley below, they struggle with witches and wizards. They struggle with the strugglers and then fighting with the fighters. That's why I'm prophesying upon the life of somebody that the evil rope that is tying you to the tail, no matter how strong it is, I command you to break. 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 In the name of Jesus. You can rise above the circumstances of your father's house. You can rise above the evil environment from which you have come up. You can rise above the circumstances of your birth. You may have been born out of fornication, out of adultery, out of incest, out of poverty, out of failure. But you can decide to rise above that level from which you have come. No matter the physical, social, and spiritual stigma around your origin, you can still by the power of God rise higher than that source and get to the top. I pray that the power to magnetize your head to that top will come upon your life now. The amen you are saying tonight is very weak. Simply because you were born in a manger does not mean that you have to die in a manger. Jesus himself was born in a manger, but that did not make him a goat or a sheep. Today, that same Jesus that was born in a manger is the King of kings and Lord of lords of the earth. And he rules over those who were even born in comfortable places. So, by the power of God, you can rise above whatever circumstances you are coming out from. This really is the key message of MFM when we are talking about foundation. That the foundation that is keeping a person down, whatever is the foundation, by the power of God, you can rise above it and get to the top. You can, by the power of God, rewrite the family history. Rewrite it in such a way that you become a reference point and a peace setter. 
Root was from abominable root, born out of incest. The race of root in the Bible was sentenced to ten generations banned from the house of God. Yet from that root emerged a wonderful woman, a persevering woman who became one of the great, great grandmothers of Jesus Christ our Lord. It was on the Mount of Ruth we had one of the greatest statements of loyalty. I said, entreat me not to stop following you. Your God shall become my God. Your people shall become my people. Where you sleep, I sleep. Where you die, I die. It was from that woman. You too can refuse to be limited by the facts of your origin. You can grow taller than ever imagined by those who focus on you and your background. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But that person that I'm talking to, as you are hearing this word, the anointing to move you to the top is coming upon your life in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. Let your amen roar like thunder. Let your amen be loud. Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. But she eventually became the savior of her father's house and the grandmother of Jesus. So it's a personal decision. You can choose to rise above the cage of your roots. You can choose to rise to the top. No matter the level from which you are coming. This is the key message that I'm trying to put across to you tonight. There are people who once they get to that top, the poverty of a lot of people are wiped out forever. When they get there, they transform those below. But if they don't get there, they cannot help others. This is why we must realize that the failure of one person may be the failure of a lot of people. The remaining on the tail of some people is the remaining of the tail of other people. You cannot give somebody a million naira when you don't have a million kobo. Therefore, you must take tonight's message very seriously. What do we mean by the top? What, what does it mean? Getting to the top. What do you mean by the top? By the top would mean your best level in Christ. By the top we mean the promised land allocated to you by heaven. When we talk about the top, we are talking about your divine allocation. When we are talking about the top, we are talking about the place where your life will bring maximum glory to God. When we are talking about the top, we are talking about where you will profit most for the kingdom. When we are talking about the top, we are talking about situations that you arrive at that will be of most blessing to the church of God. When we are talking about the top, we are talking about the level where the activities of your life becomes an inspiration and a model to the unbelievers and believers. I profess for somebody that the power of the pace setter, the power of the difference maker, shall fall upon you in the name of Jesus. When we are talking about the top, we are talking about a level where you enjoy plenty of Blessings of rain from heaven. We're talking about a level where the mercy, the favor, the grace and power of God will be upon you in a big measure. When we're talking about it, we're talking about a level where your life enters into a season of spiritual refreshing and fruitfulness. When we're talking about it, we're talking about the realm where there will be manifold open doors unto your life. When we're talking about it, we're talking about a level where you're just walking and you're getting results sweatlessly. When we're talking about it, we're talking about you arriving at the paradise of your dreams. When we're talking about it, we're talking about a level where Jesus is so dear to you and heaven is so close to you. When we're talking about it, we're talking about the level where your life becomes a model of good success. People use you as a good example. When we talk about it, we're talking about the level where your life becomes a liberating and lifting force to many people. When we're talking about it, we're talking about a level where your life becomes so significant, you are contributing to your generation, you are not just a consumer. When we're talking about it, we're talking about the level where the history book of your generation will contain your name. When we're talking about it, we're talking about you securing a capital city in the master plan of God. When we're talking about the top, we're talking about you leaving your footprints on the sand of time. 
When we are talking about the talk, we are talking about you coming to a place where you secure a heavenly recognition. So the top is the maximum level, the topmost level, the glorious level, the superior level, first class level, first rate level, a champion level, a royal level, unparalleled level, principal level, capital level, the greatest level. I'm praying for somebody that whether it is convenient for your enemy or not, you will get there in Jesus' name. Let your amen be loud and clear. 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 Now, what are the keys to getting to that top? This is where there is a little bit of problem. A little bit of problems. But let me try and explain. In making your way to the top, there is a need for me to let you understand that there are two tops. There is the earthly top, there is the heavenly top. The terrestrial top, the celestial top. It is tragedy if you only succeed in making your way to the earthly top and then you don't make your way to the heavenly top. You have to combine the two. And this is why we preach holiness within and without. Don't just make it here and get to heaven and you don't make anything. And this is why it is a heart cry. When you see people who come to the house of God and they don't understand that their major priority is to make heaven. And they do not understand. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. All other things shall be an automatic addition. They don't understand it. It's a tragedy when the person comes to a place like Mountain of Fire, you are playing with sin. It's a tragedy. And when you play with sin, you downgrade your life and destroy your destiny. They brought a boy for prayer, a university student. But the parents didn't understand what was wrong. She had gone mad. But in that madness, he was shouting somebody's name. He was shouting Lucinda, 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 Lucinda. Was he shouting that Lucinda when they brought him for prayers? Daddy, mommy, who is Lucinda? We don't know. Don't know who Lucinda is. Prayer started on him. Eventually, his madness came down a little bit. Who is Lucinda? He said, my former girlfriend. Where does he live? He tried to describe. We searched for Lucinda. And she came. And we said, this man is mad, but he's mentioning your name. You know what she said? We should have been that he is still going to run murder. If that English is correct. We said, but why? So this idiot, this idiot, this virgin. And then he said he was no longer interested. He's gone to another girl. So that is why we decided in our meeting to make him like this. And we are going to increase the heat of the madness. So he's not mad yet. Oh. That's why he said sitting down here. When we increase the madness, you people here, not be able to stand it. Lucinda was sitting down quietly. Lucinda did not invite this brother. He was the one that talked to Lucinda. Nobody forced the brother to remove his trousers. He took it off himself. But now there's a price to pay. So after he has received madness from the coven of Lucinda, they now dragged him to a pastor who was not aware when he was sleeping with Lucinda. Any life of sin prevents you from moving. Because everyone will find it so difficult to help you. That leads us to the first key for those who are determined to get to the top. The first key may sound simple, but it's a key. It's a solid foundational key. You must be born again. You must experience new birth. You must experience new birth. The Bible says, Whosoever is in Christ has become a new creature. All things are passed away. To be old, all things have become new. You must be born again. A lot of people who come to church are not born again. Some actually are born against. They are not born again. So don't deceive yourself. Everybody is here is born again. No? Just that they are not born again. They may be in the choir, they may not be born again. They may be in the ocean, they may not be born again. They may even be a pastor and they are not born again. It is possible to be speaking in tongues and you are not born again. 
So they, they understand this very, very well. Because when you are born again, old things are passed away. And all things have become new. You may be baptized in water, you are not born again. You may have baptismal name, but you are not born again. You may even be singing special number, that I am born again, I am born again, but you are not born again. You may think I am a new creature, I am born again, all things are passed away, and it is a lie, you are not born again. Your father may be a pastor, and you are not born again. This is where the problem comes. A lot of people who come to the house of God, they are simply not born again. And so they make it so difficult for everyone to fight for them without reservation. Some are only born again when you don't talk about money. But once you talk about money, oh, they lose everything called salvation. How can somebody who is a believer cheat others because of money? It's because he's not born again. How can somebody who is born again be telling lies in the office that he's married with seven children when he's still a bachelor? It's because he's not born again. He's not born again. There are plenty of people who call themselves estate agent, estate agent, estate agent. You collect money more than the landlord, take appointment from three, four people for the same house, you don't give it to them, and your name is Joshua. You're not born again. So because of what you've done, you change your city, the church, say they don't locate you. You're a child of the devil, you are not born again. And let me tell you the truth, beloved. Any money you take from somebody, and the person did not release the money to you from his heart, you can't prosper with such money. That's the truth. It's not giving it to you from his heart. It's giving it grudgingly, unhappily. The person is not born again. Anyone sleeping with any man or woman outside marriage, no matter your name, no matter your status, you are simply not born again. And because of that, everyone's finding it difficult to get you to the top. That is key number one. This key that I'm talking about gives heaven a lot of headache. A lot of headache. A lot of angelic weeping and crying. That look at this person. This is where we're supposed to put him. But look at the sin in his life. How do we now promote this man? He does not represent heaven. That's a problem. If you are here tonight like that, don't enter into the coming year with that kind of magumago life. It will not help you at all. And that may be what is pulling you down. Pulling you down. Pulling you down. Pulling you down. I want you to understand this very well. One day, God will open every eye. Then you will understand why the preacher sometimes is shouting and screaming. You understand why a man will wear a three-piece suit and will jump inside the bus and be preaching salvation. You understand that there is a price. There is a price. You must be born again. You must experience the salvation power of God. Two. Key number two. You must determine to depart from your present level. It's a determination. A holy determination. Or not. I can't remain where I am now. I must depart from here. Whatever is going to cost me, I must depart from this level. Whatever is going to cost me, I must move away from this level to another level. See, this is the level I am now. I can't stay in this level. I am divinely dissatisfied. I am constructively dissatisfied. So I must depart from this position. I must have that rugged determination to depart from your present bus stop. That determination may push you into certain things. It may push you to the kind of place you have never prayed before. It may push you to the kind of reading you have never read before. A rugged determination to escape from that kind of situation where you are. The family I came from was very poor. Very, very poor. And we are going to church. But in our church, nobody taught us how do you depart from poverty? How do you change your level? We didn't know all that. We danced. We sang songs that we didn't understand. We sang songs that... When I'm looking at those songs, I say, ah, what kind of song is this? It's not the song of moving forward. Sometimes it's a song of staying backward. I don't want to sing them tonight. They didn't teach us. We didn't know. But I was determined that whatever it's going to cost me, I want to escape from this foundation that I see. Where that day and mommy are fighting on the dining table because of soup that is not delicious. And somebody will be taking a bowl of a and throwing it across the table. This soup is not sweet. But that's the money you put down. Problem. How do I get out of this? I got into secondary school with that determination. How do I get out? How do I get out? Until one day, an Indian teacher came to class. He was supposed to teach mathematics. 
But the man is fond of gyrating all over the place instead of teaching mathematics. So one day, just look at us. Eh? Boys, if you want to escape poverty, read your book. He said, what? He just said it and continued his mathematics. That was the first time I heard somebody talking about escaping poverty. Oh, so to escape from poverty, you read book. Okay. Thank you, sir. At least you gave me one key. Beginning from the day he said it, every day, from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., I was reading. Reading. In those days, I memorized the whole of the gospel according to St. Luke. Because it was in a syllabus. And I didn't want to be bothering myself opening the Bible when they are reading it. When I did that, my mark in Bible knowledge moved from 65 to 96 and above. The boy that used to compete with me still remained at 62, 61. And that's what got me through. And by the time we got to the final stage, I had the best result in the old school. Why did I do all this? A rugged determination to change that level. To change the level. I pray that any power that wants to tie you down to a satanic poster so that you will not lift your head, so that you will not rise, that power shall be buried tonight. It shall be buried tonight. It shall be buried tonight. He shall be buried tonight in the name of Jesus. Three. Key number three. You must become a man and woman of priority. Your priority. That is, you must determine so that you can focus. Because in life it's so easy to be distracted. You must remain focused. You must have your priority. The Bible says, line upon line, precept upon precept. Priority. Determine it. Is it your priority to stay with somebody and be playing what card? Is it your priority to sit down and be playing Ludo with people? Is it your priority to be wasting time watching masquerade dancing on the streets? Is it your priority to spend 10 hours of the day watching television? Is it your priority to read the Bible? Is it your priority to pray? Is it your priority to sit down and study what you want to know so that you become a master of it? Because in life, anything you want to become a master of, you must devote time to it and study it. And as a rule of life, any man or any woman that can do something better than everybody else, no matter where he is, to find the way to his house. It's a rule. It's a rule. If it's ordinary meat pie, he can do. Better than anyone around. If he's in the remotest corner, people will locate him. This is a rule of life. If it's close, you can sow. And your own is first class. Even if the road to your street is bad, they will find you there. They will go there and look for you there. It's a rule of life. Determine your priorities. Determine your priority. I'm praying for somebody at every priority bondage keeping you from focusing shall be scattered in the name of Jesus. That amen is not loud enough. I learned a powerful lesson some years back. In order to make hands meet as a student, I was teaching in a lesson, a home lesson. The owner of the lesson was called Aladdin. Ala, Aladdin. I don't know why he got the name from, but it's Aladdin. A professor in the University of Lagos was bringing his young daughter for lesson. A young girl. I don't know what went wrong. Aladdin began to sleep with this small girl, and the girl got pregnant. Immediately, we knew that the girl was pregnant. People like me began to panic, because we knew that once the professor descends on Aladdin, Aladdin was finished. Very popular professor, this man. I don't want to mention his name. So popular that sometimes when they have a problem in the court, they call him to come and explain. But for some strange reasons, the professor did not come. He didn't even come to Aladdin's house. He didn't come to arrest Aladdin. He had his game plan. We didn't know his game plan. We were still afraid. The day came, the girl fell into labor. The professor was waiting for the girl at the maternity hospital in Lagos. The girl delivered a baby girl. Immediately, she delivered. Professor grabbed her from that maternity hospital, 
drove her straight to Mutala Mohammed Airport and flew her abroad. She never saw the baby. The next morning, they have dropped the baby at the door mouth of Aladdin. Because the professor had seen that this baby would be a distraction to this girl. Removed the girl from the environment and took her away. And the girl went back to school. She now has a PhD. I learned a lesson from that unbelieving professor. Lack of focus is a big problem indeed. A person comes to mountain of fire, the enemy has battered his head up and down. Now he has prayed, he has done deliverance, it's a bit okay. Now that is a bit okay. He has now become a commentator. Hey, look, at, look at this pastor. <laughs> Tall pastor. Man in a short wife. Look at this one. Look at that one. The commentator. Lost focus. I pray that you not lose focus. <laughs> Key number four. You must clear your foundation. Clear that your foundation. Continue your deliverance prayers. Continue doing that deliverance until that foundation is clear. When you are talking about praying against evil foundation, you can never overpray. You can only underpray. But if you overpray, there is no problem. But if you underpray the prayer foundation, that foundation is coming back to fight you. It's a strange matter. Some time ago, I think it was in Abekuta, a man died. They brought his corpse to church. It was an Anglican church. That day, <laughs> I've never seen a day like this. But there, there's that kind of church where they bring coffin to church. So they put the coffin there at the altar. The poor widow was there crying. And it was the time for the priest to minister. It was the shortest obituary sermon I've ever listened to. The man just came to the altar with his priestly gown. Saying, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you all for coming for this burial ceremony. Say, you widow, don't waste your time crying. Say, you people who have come for this burial. Listen to this special announcement. The man inside this coffin has gone to hellfire. So because many times he will be drunk and drunk and drunk and will pick him from the gutter and drive him. Even me myself, I pick him from the gutter to take him home before. So he died a drunken man and he has gone to hellfire. So may the Lord bless you as you return to your homes. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. That's Samuel. But that's not where I'm going. He had a son. The son too now has become a drunkard. Why? Foundation. I'm praying for somebody. Every demoting foundation, the foundation of the tail that wants to drag you down, let that foundation be crushed now. In the name of Jesus. Let the foundation be buried. Let it be buried. Let it be buried. Let it be buried. Let it be buried. In the name of Jesus. Close your eyes, Philip. And say this loud. Say every foundation. Inviting me to the tail region. Can you shout his loud? In Jesus' name we pray. So I feel like I'm supposed to be praying. I'm not praying yet. Okay, let's just run them very quickly. Key number five. You must reclaim any ground you have given to the kingdom of darkness. Reclaim any ground you have given to the kingdom of darkness. Key number six. You must remove unforgiveness from your life. Remove unforgiveness from your life. Key number seven. Break curses which has affected you since conception. Since conception. Key number eight. Bind all ancestral demons. Key number nine. Decide to be different. Decide to be different by waging aggressive warfare that will propel you to the top. And finally, 
live a holy life. These are the ten keys that will get you to the top. I'm praying for somebody that every limitation, limiting forces and barriers, the factors that are destroying your effort, the power that is functioning your dream, shall be demolished in the name of Jesus. Amen. The prayers of tonight. If you are not desperate enough, don't bother to pray. The prayers of tonight. If you don't mind where you are, don't bother to pray. But if you are Tired of being tired. I want to change that level. You will pray this level changing, getting to the top prayers. Prayers that will propel you from where you are to where God wants you to be. Say this loud and clear. My Father! Catapult me to the top! Open your mouth and pray this loud. Go set a catella kayabo shanta. Riba piali katanda santa. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout this louder than anyone here. Satanic rope. Stop. Break in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say it. Somebody is supposed to be praying this prayer loud. Matisade Kapola Kaya Boshendi Rabakantia. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Jesus name we pray. Shout this now, say destiny coffins. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Say the destiny coffins are blessed. Baptizing the Kaya Boshin de Raba. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, oh God, our connect me to my helper. In the name of Jesus. Connect me to my helpers. Bopa le katasa, ribo sente ya bo sente kara bo sente laba. Yes. Jesus name we pray. Say my father. Make me a blessing to my generation. Can I hear you shouting that? Your voice is not loud enough. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Name we pray. 
this particular prayer will deliver so many people from the lower level of life and make them to possess their possession. Every power can my staff. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stretch your right hand. Father, this hands that are stretched forward. Your word says, We shall lay our hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. These hands that are stretched here, let them become the hands of healing, the hands of deliverance, the hands of power, the hands of strength, the hands of glory. The answer breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Let these hands become the battle axe of God in the name of Jesus. Get us up ready now. Anywhere you are having pain or disability in your body, smite it 21 times. And as you smite it, you will shout, Blood of Jesus. Let's go. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray.